because so many people set goals but they don't follow they don't follow through or they give up just right before they achieve their goals or they're scared of fear of rejection so we want to help them get them some inspiration maybe some actual steps uh, but thanks for having me and if, if we're to go along with as you were talking about you know one I feel a lot of people give up on their dreams because or their goals maybe they've written maybe you've written them down and you've gotten that far but we give up on it because either it's too large or we haven't set even a tangible plan on how to get there mm -hmm. or we're in this world we live in a world of instant gratification where it's like you turn on the television you change to whatever station you go to 7-eleven right away and you get what you want right away and we're conditioned to have responses right away to everything and a dream takes patience and so I asked myself, my book's called Into the Wind, and I asked myself, what would have to happen one year from now in order for me to look back and say it was my most successful, my most fulfilling year yet? Mm -hmm. And the reason I did that as I shared in the speech tonight is because in 1979, they did a study at Harvard University where they took the incoming MBA students and they asked them if they had any written goals. And Katrina knew <laughs> the answer, it's only 3% of them had written goals. 97% did not, and 10 years later they surveyed their net worth, and the 3% with written goals was greater than the 97% without. The importance of having a clearly defined goal is, is unparalleled to anything else in our lives, because it's giving us that excitement to wake up in the morning and keep going. And when we get there, a lot of times we set a goal. But we ask ourselves, what's the worst that could happen? And we're like, well, if I, the worst that could happen is this and this and this. And so we don't consistently take action because of the fear of yeah. failure or because of the fear of other people's opinions. Mm -hmm. And so I invite anyone listening to this to ask, what's the best that can happen? When you have a clear goal, what's the best that can happen? That's beautiful. And you say... People uh, set goals and then they wake up and try to every day get one step closer to the goals. I've heard so many times people say, I want to do something, I want to accomplish, I want to be fulfilled, but I don't know what's my goal or I don't know how to find my mission and my passion. They, they just lost. Do you have any solutions? Absolutely. We live in a world where we have giant skyscrapers, everything's bigger, everything's better, bigger TVs, bigger whatever. So we often get in this conception that your my passion has to be that I write a book or I have to write a screenplay or I have to be in a Hollywood movie or I have, I have to help a million people. It can be so little as just quote unquote so little. It's so large making somebody smile, helping somebody through their day. Oftentimes when we have a willingness to start exploring, to start experiencing, I think that our passion finds us a lot of the times mm -hmm. when we can take those steps asking the right questions can often get us into the right positions we're usually asking ourselves questions like oh why did I mess up because you're stupid a voice says back to us in our heads and changing the questions when you ask you always receive so how can you change the question what is it that makes me feel like myself that could be a good way to start for somebody that doesn't know where to begin well, what makes me feel like myself and listing things out that make you feel like yourself and working backwards and not ruling it out that, oh, this is, I can't make money at this or I can't make money at that because everybody's done something that supported it, that supported themselves. So not ruling yourself out and psyching yourself out before you begin, mm -hmm. but perhaps asking the right questions, you know, what makes me feel like myself, but also remembering, you know, that in order to have a balanced life, we have to have goals in all aspects. It doesn't just have to be your work. It needs to be your relationships, your health, finances, a spiritual or emotional wellness. There's a plethora of subjects. Mm -hmm. And so we can always start with smaller things such as physical fitness. And the more we start achieving goals, the more the confidence builds in the process. But if you can't find it, perhaps ask yourself, what is it that makes me feel like myself? What is it that while I'm doing it, I don't feel like I'm doing work, or it doesn't feel like a task, it feels like a joy?
Yeah, and you just mentioned that your question was what I need to do to feel fulfilled a year after. What was your goal for that year? Well, my, my most previous one was that my book, Into the Wind, is a is an Amazon bestseller. Yeah, it's and an amazing book. I, I read it a few times. First you sent me a PDF version before it was published, and then I read this copy. <laughs> amazing. Right on. So, my first one was, I have a many goals, but my primary one was that first that this was an Amazon bestselling book. It was a large goal, and you know, speaking about oftentimes we get disgruntled through the process. So it's important to not only have a vision, to have a goal, but to create actionable steps, actionable plans to get there. What are the things you can consistent, consistently begin to do? Mm -hmm. So mine was this about a year or two years ago, and it just released April 16th, and it was a bestseller. I could have given it up all along the way and said, well, it couldn't happen, well, this couldn't happen, but I just kept reminding myself when that voice in my head would happen, what's the best that can happen? And remembering that I have a plan, I have things that I could do. Tony Robbins says that the results you want, somebody else has already achieved them. And all you have to do yeah. is just copy that. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a goal, if you have a dream, Google somebody who's done it before. Or if you think you have an excuse, I guarantee that you'll find somebody online who's achieved results you consider admirable with the same excuse. Mm -hmm. And we just have to explore a little bit. So do you have a role model who you model to become a bestseller? I model Jack Canfield. Jack yeah. Canfield is the creator of Chicken Soup mm -hmm. for the Soul. I model Jack Canfield specific, okay. down to the T. <laughs> Are you planning to go for a New York Times bestseller? Yeah, that's the next, that's the next one, yeah. Great. And uh, can you share with us, do you have any specific rituals you do every single day? For your health and for your spiritual health, physical, whatever you do, you want to know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, you know, I, a really important thing is our the natural state of our body. The the pH level is supposed to be seven point three four six alkalinity. Yes. Most of us are eating extremely acidic foods. What's an acidic emotion? An acidic emotion is depression, anguish, upset. We don't get what we want, we get what we are. And so when we're in this state of assist, of acid, of acidity, mm -hmm. we're bringing those situations to us. So having an alkaline diet, I prep wheatgrass is something I do every day. I, I smile. I was talking about a study in the 70s they did at Berkeley where they took clinically depressed patients, 20 of them, the only thing they had them do was simply to smile for 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at night, and their depression symptoms went away just by going like this. And so I, I recondition myself, the way that I'm sitting, the way that I'm smiling. I meditate, do breath work, mm -hmm. I, I journal, I get, get the thoughts out of the head and get them on paper so they don't obstruct you from going on with your day. Those are a few simple things that, that I do that for me, are things, if I don't do them, if I go two days, three days without doing them, usually a day without doing anything like that, I have an off day. Yeah, I love your point, and I also read that love is much is much more alkalizing even than a shot of wheatgrass, so it's so important mm. to have positive emotions and smile, of course. Yeah. <laughs> do you have an opinion on uh, college, formal college education? Well, this is one of my favorite subjects because education, the word education in the English language, it comes from the, from the root word in Latin, educo. Educo means to draw from within. So the, the real word education came from means to draw with, from within. We've created a world where we have textbooks. Imagine this is a textbook. We memorize it. If you memorize it well enough, you get a good grade and you're considered educated which is a paradox because it's the exact contrary definition to what education really means. I actually read today that uh, out of the top 200 richest people in the world, I think like 60 of them didn't go to college. And, you know, 
yes, education is important, but education comes through a, a, a plethora of, of means. Uh -huh. And so, I guess whatever it is your path is to consistent, consistently do it. But in the same way, we've not only is education, we, we largely have a lot of people that are memorizing things. That translates into the rest of our lives. We have a lot of people that are mechanically waking up at 7 in the morning and doing a bunch of tasks for somebody else and getting paid per the hour rather than per their own, per their own results. So they never have an incentive to, to draw more from mm -hmm. within themselves. The real word educate to draw from within. So I, it's funny how it reflects to all the other aspects of our life. So I just feel that it's important regardless of whether you're memorizing a textbook or whether you're, you're making art is to always stop at any time and, and say, is this making sense to me? And to be conscious through the process mm -hmm. of it rather than the unconsciousness of it. What is success to you? What is success to me? Success to me is doing what I want to do, when I want to do, with who I want to do, how I want to do it. <laughs> That's great. Tony Robbins and Jack Canfield and T. Hart Ecker, they all say the same, right? Yes, yes. And when do you think you're gonna reach that stage? I think I'm already I'm already there right now, mm -hmm. but I it's a, I've I've gotten to this position now. However, being that I'm not a set mold of a human being, my wants, my desires, everything continues to change. Mm -hmm. So I think it's always an evolving process, but when I can remember that I've already achieved what I've achieved, T. Harv Eker has a list and that he keeps in his wallet of uh, all the things he's already achieved in his life. Mm -hmm. So regardless if his goal takes longer, he can remind himself that he already has achieved. Yeah. Right now, with the internet, I think everyone can be, cons you really, you can do right now, regardless of your savings, what you want, when you want, with who you want. You can contact whoever you want. You, there's 24 hours in a day, even if you're working, there's a lot more hours in a day. I think right now everyone can be a success, it's just a matter of, as you're asked yeah. by definition, how you're defining success. Yeah, yeah, I love it that there are 24 hours and if you, even if they work 9 to 5, they still have time to do something, so obviously if they don't do it, they have excuses. Excuses, excuses. Well, you know what's so funny is that all the things that we complain about, are all the things that we can actually change. It's like nobody complains about gravity. It's like instead we just we play baseball and we figure out the thing we play basketball. If we didn't have gravity, we couldn't do all these things. Yeah. And we always complain about the things we can change. I don't have enough money. Well, you can change that. I don't have this. I don't have that. Well, you can change mm -hmm. that. I'm always late. Well, you could show up earlier. It's funny that we complain about all the things, we have excuses for all the things we actually can change. You know, when we look back on our life, the only thing I feel being having a near-death experience that I'm going to remember is all the excuses that I had that stopped me from really realizing all of who I am, all of what I'm capable of. And it's so powerful to really let that sit with it when you look at your life. All your excuses are all things you can take control of. And if you look online, somebody's achieved a level of fulfillment, the level of success, material or internal, with the same excuses that you have. Larry Hamilton, who wrote the foreword to my book, he's the world champion big wave surfer. I asked him this question and he looked at me like this and he said, everybody has an excuse and everybody has it worse than you. Do it anyways. That's great. Somebody always has it worse than you, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Fear of rejection. People don't take actions because they are so scared to death to hear no. I say everything is a risk. Everything mm -hmm. in life is a risk. It's a risk to stay where you are in the fear of rejection of what can happen. It's a risk because you don't. You're risking what's available to you if you can draw within you the courage to take action, anyways. You know, it's that saying that cur that courage is in the absence of fear, but it's the ability to take action regardless. Everything is a risk. So, what's a greater reward? Asking yourself the right questions rather than what's the worst that could happen? Well, everyone's going to reject me and this is going to happen and everyone's going to hate me and I'm going to lose all my money and I'm going to be a failure for my life. 
what about what's the best that can happen yeah. with my life? And when we can remember that, yeah, it's a risk to step into the unknown, to do something different, to test the waters, we can remember that there's a greater reward there because we already know what we have inside mm -hmm. of the ordinary. If you have only one minute and you can send a message to our viewers, what would you say? That's, this is your chance to say something inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us are gambling on the biggest risk of all. That's the bet that we can buy the freedom to do what we want later in life after we made some money or after we pleased enough people. When you die, the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to wonder if you lived your own life or if you lived somebody else's. We want to live a life that everybody else wants us to live because we think it provides safety, it provides security. But what's more dangerous than giving up your authenticity, your desires, your dreams, never finding them in order to live somebody else's desire. That's the most dangerous thing of all. So what is it that's your dream, your goal? Write it down.